You got to go back to the origins of that, which came out of the 2016 uh, separation, blade separation. Uh, the FAA has been looking at that for two years, and what's happened now is since we had the uh, fatal uh, on this particular flight, now they're going to do everything they were going to do as much as 10 months ago and do it within two weeks, or at least. Uh, originate the airworthiness directive in two weeks. Uh, as to how many engines and, and precisely which airline does what, uh, that's not 100% fleshed out yet. I think we'll see that come about in the next couple of weeks. Once it's issued, uh, I would suspect pretty much anybody with a CF6 or a CFM56 engine in the aircraft is going to want to take a look at the blades. Uh, it is a rigorous process. Uh, they're wanting ultrasonic testing on the blades. You have to take all the blades off the wheel. Uh, that by itself is a pretty laborious uh, process. And each of the compressor stages further back, and uh, I think the CFM56 has 12 or 13 compressor stages. So you're talking quite a few blades. It's going to be a Herculean task to accomplish this sort of an inspection, even if it is only limited to the, the C1 blades. Uh, so I would probably be looking at, we'd probably be looking at several months before every single one of them has been inspected. But most airlines don't really keep too many surplus airplanes because uh, an aircraft that's not flying is not making money and when you have to pull it offline for a maintenance activity you didn't expect, that revenue is lost. Uh, I usually say it's as perishable as lettuce in a boxcar in Yuma in the summer. Uh, once that airline seat's gone, uh, you can't get that one back and this is going to cause an awful lot of revenue uh, disruptions for a lot of airlines.